So this is a 2.0 with soprano guitar build, trying to create a guitar that can match the high register of a piano or even higher. There was a lot to learn from the first video. If you want to maybe go ahead and check that one out first. We made it all the way up to match a piano's range and then some, but the main critique was that the frets were first of all hard to reach and second of all hard to finger with anything other than your nail. Thankfully, a lot of us could still appreciate the curiosity and potential of such a high range instrument and had some great ideas on how to improve. It's time to try some new ideas and see if this soprano guitar can be anything practical. This is Kevin from Said Too Much. So the obvious solution to accessibility would be to create a super deep left hand cutout. Short of chopping the bottom wing off altogether, I think this will be functional enough. I didn't really have a vision on an aesthetically pleasing way to pull this off at first, so I kind of just immediately jumped in and faced the table saw. Getting a fresh B standard tuning on this guy for a famous guitar riffs up a fifth video I did, I was hoping I'd be able to just keep the strings on while modding and not have to buy a whole new set. I was still kind of anticipating that the .007 string would still break through all the saw vibrations and handling, but I was wrong. It broke immediately while I was just loosening all the strings tension for slightly less strain on the neck. Good thing I had the foresight of a drawer full of spares. Eh, I have a spare. The neck pickup I replaced with the extended fretboard in the first place. Looks like the cutout is going to be just a little bit deeper than I planned. Messing around a little more, I shaved it down to a shape I like. It exposed the neck and middle pickup cavities a little, so I had to patch it up with some scrap wood. I decided to just leave the electronics cavity exposed for now. The pickup is kind of spilling out too because of my mistake, but it's fine. I created a new pick guard that I tried to look more sleek for this almost bottom wingless design. I experimented painting it white too, but ultimately it was back to black. A crude black finish on all the new exposed wood surfaces too, and we're done. It's not the prettiest, but let's just call it a prototype. Ideally, you would want to shave down the body thickness too, in order to get your thumb comfortably underneath like the rest of the neck. Maybe I could have shortened the bolts, possibly just glued the neck in place, fill in that tremolo cavity, installed a fixed bridge and went for it, but I figured one step at a time here. This is already quite an improvement, and I didn't really want to risk destroying the guitar altogether without trying out a few ideas first. And so yeah, other than that, I'm pretty happy with the design. Leaving some bit of the bottom wing on still lets me have it in my lap pretty comfortably. Some of you brought up the Sky Guitar, which does have its bottom wing completely chopped off. We'll talk more about that guitar later though. Playing this with a neck strap is also a pretty good idea because it gets the guitar closer to your body. But if you're not playing super high up all the time, I think it's all right. All said and done, it looks like the guitar is now one or two pounds lighter.
It's definitely easier to reach the frets, but not necessarily to get your fingers in between them. Luckily, the beauty of this design since the beginning is that the extended fretboard piece can be interchangeable. And I've got two new designs that might be able to solve this problem. So this was my first thought on things we could do to improve. I'm not completely used to fretless instruments altogether. It's a little weird trying to finger exactly at the fret marker instead of just under it like normal. You have to be super accurate unless you're doing the auto-tune thing, which is kind of what frets do in the first place. Frets are the auto-tune of stringed instruments. Also, when 3D printing, you get that staircase kind of layering from the basic nature of the process. This was an issue for bending strings along what's supposed to be a curved surface last time too, but obviously all I really needed to do was just sand it a little. Duh, works fine. So this idea comes from that Sky Guitar, which features the frets spilling over an actual hidden neck pickup and using the whole note interval idea. I'm not quite sure I'm starting the whole stepping where he does, but my thought was to start at the 12th fret, then go up six whole steps to the 36th fret, or the third octave. Taking more inspiration from the guitar, you'll notice that the higher frets are also scalloped, which my thinking was if I wanted that missing half step interval, I could just finger the fret underneath where that would be and press a little harder to bend it up there. I don't know if you could tell what I was trying to do in the demo, but it was definitely too difficult to try that. Not even just because of tension. Remember, the higher you go in pitch, the further you're going to have to bend a string in order to hit normal note intervals. Just normal whole or half step bends on this super light string are not only super nerve wracking about having it break on you, but just really hard to do. So I'm not quite sure how I feel about this design. We could always just create individual frets for individual notes of a particular key. If you want to change key, just change fretboard pieces. What do you all think? So there's only a handful of other instruments that can hit this range. For comparison, there's a piano, a piccolo, a violin, glockenspiel. Now here's just a pure sine wave.
I always find these instruments beautiful whenever working on arrangements, fitting nicely above everything, adding a level of sheen, and not really fighting for space in the mix. I can see the argument for these frequencies getting annoying, but done subtly, I think these are useful instruments. Someone also pointed out to me on Instagram that this design also resembles a Zahn Hyperbass, which is a pretty cool instrument itself, being completely fretless and reaching all the way up to that 36 fret. Maybe this calls for modding more of the instruments in my collection. For now though, enough said. For downloads, raw instrument tracks, and more exclusives, find our community on Patreon and consider adding your support. Said too much!